the show. So, big shot. I hear Adler thinks you're good enough to join our crew. We'll see. When the waters get deep, it's sink or swim. So, before I put you to work, let's get everything out in the open. I don't know if Adler mentioned it, and for his sake, I hope he hasn't. But you aren't about to sign up with any average pirate crew. You're signing up with the Crimson Fleet. That's if you get through this little task I have planned for you. There's a medical supply ship called the Raigana, jumping into Enceladus's orbit. On board that ship, you'll find a traitor named Austin Rake. I want him dead. This job isn't about the loot, but I suppose every dog needs its scraps. Keep whatever worthless junk is on that ship. Just remember, the only thing that matters is that Rake dies. There's a lesson in this. I need you to learn what'll happen if you decide to turn your back on the fleet. Consider it your glimpse into a possible unfortunate future. So you'd better pay close attention.
simple transport ship heading to New Homestead. We do not want any trouble. for you to take this offer. It shows more mercy than you know. Well, normally I would say no, but frankly it will be safer for us that way. All right, you can dock. We will talk then. Any adventure you can fly away from. Is, is that how the saying goes? I am not sure what to make of you being here. If you wanted to kill us, you could have done that from your ship. If you wanted our cargo, we could have jettisoned it. I guess I should just stop talking and let you say your piece. That is true. Which means you don't want somebody to know what you are really up to. Now, do you mind telling us what this is all about? You really do not know which one of us is Rake, do you? And you do not seem to care either, which makes me think you really want to save him. Okay, I have idea. We can strike his name from Manifest, make it so he was never on board. Then, when we dock, we will leave him on this ship and deliver him to another port. That is fair. We do not want any part of the fleet. Is that all right with you, Austin? Do I have a choice? It does not appear you do. Well then, it is agreed. You go back to your ship and we will make sure Rake was never on ours. And in case any of your handlers get suspicious, here. We had an extra crate of supplies loaded, in case one got damaged. This should be proof you were not here to bargain. Thank you for letting us go.
control, but it definitely went faster after you jumped into the fight. Now tell me about the Ragana. Give me some good news, then we can go celebrate. Mercenaries. Guns for hire that shoot their own parents if they were paid enough. I'll tell you. We do a hell of a lot of dirty work in the Crimson Fleet. But we'd never sell away our souls like an ecliptic merc does. Delgado happy, seeing as our hands are clean. I would have preferred if you hadn't left witnesses behind, but at least you got the job done. Anyway, you wanted into the Crimson Fleet? Well, you're in. Yep, it's that simple. Hope this business with Rakes taught you something. Because I'm about to stick my neck out and vouch for you. If you screw up, and I wind up looking like an asshole, I'm gonna send someone after you. We clear? Be careful what you wish for. You screw up bad enough, and I just might. And now that you know the deal, it's time to see what you signed up for. I'm gonna upload the coordinates for our headquarters in the Crick system. Spacers call it the key, the fleet calls it home. Head out there as soon as you can. Don't keep me waiting long. Joining the Crimson Fleet is hardly a cause for celebration. But you have your reasons. So for now, I will allow it. I have things I wish to discuss with you. When you have time. I have been thinking about what we talked about before. The idea of purpose in one's life. You agreed with me that true purpose can be a driving force in life. I found that comforting, but something has been nagging at me since. I have been single-minded in my pursuits. I have always believed the decisions I made were necessary, that there was no other option. I have sacrificed much to be where I am now. And... I'm starting to wonder if it has been worth it. I know. I have told you that I am not one to discuss my past. And yet... No, that is not what I am trying to say. I... promised to provide for my family. That meant working with smugglers to procure supplies we could not acquire any other way. I have spent my adult life away from my home. Jumping from one planet to the next, living in dangerous conditions, often surrounded by violence. It certainly influenced the way I see the universe. I was convinced from the beginning that it was unwise to let anyone get too close. I had, maybe not quite friends, but people I cared about. Yet there was always a distance I could not reach across. I often find other people complicated and confusing. It seemed easier to not become attached, especially when circumstances meant I I might never see them again, with no warning.
Until now, I have disagreed strongly with that idea. But therein lies my concern. What I am trying to say is that I now wonder whether it has been the right decision to distance myself from others. I appreciate that more than you know. I find the interior of this ship comforting. Captain, do you require my assistance? I had a friend. I hope I'll be able to see him next time we're on shore leave. I got mess hall duty next week. Everybody's gonna take their turn. to one of the officers. We got mob duty on my birthday. You have permission to speak freely. We got the message from the Regana about Austin Rick. We had him dropped off at a separate port, off the books. Suffice to say, he's got a lot to answer for. That's a smart line to follow. Part of this role you're playing means having to make hard choices. Just remember not to lose yourself in the part. We did our best not to cross the line, but the more we do, the more we risk exposing the deception. Oh, one more thing before we move on. For transparency's sake, you should know we were the ones that hired Ecliptic to attack Neva's ship. There was concern after what happened with the Regana that you might have trouble earning Neva's trust. Coming to her rescue ensured that would not be a problem. They are mercenaries for hire. If they are paid enough money, Ecliptic would attack the Vigilance. It wasn't terribly difficult to convince them to attack an isolated Crimson Fleet ship. Just expensive. But a gamble that hopefully paid off. On that note, how did things go with Neva? Were you able to join the fleet? Then it worked. You're in. Sounds like everything is going as expected. Now it's time for the next phase of the mission. Our intel on Sears show was correct. After we received reports on your interaction with Adler Kemp, we picked up on your rendezvous with Neva Mora. Our files indicate she's second in command, so getting on a good side will ensure you get into the Crimson Fleet. Yes, you pass your first test and you're still alive. But before we get too confident, that either means she suspects nothing, 
but she intends to make an example of you later. Just remember, these are ruthless criminals, so don't let your guard down. And their ruthlessness is only surpassed by their cunning. You should proceed with caution, regardless of how well you think you've ingratiated yourself. So what's next for you on Neva's agenda? The Vigilance is equipped with one of the most advanced intelligence suites in the UC fleet. Nothing slips through. You can rest assured, if the Crimson Fleet had any access to our whereabouts or had infiltrated our security, we'd know. As long as you're here, your identity is safe. Where you'll meet Delgado, no doubt. Delgado is the leader of the Crimson Fleet. I have a profile here with some information on his background. You'll want to know the individual cadences of every member of the fleet, but Delgado's most of all. What is there to know? He is pirate scum, like all of them. Exactly. The Crimson Fleet is not a monolith. Any information you have on its members can only help. In any case, now that you're with the fleet, you'll be operating independently. We will shadow you eventually, but we'll need to maintain our distance for now, especially while you're on the key. This will also give us time to bolster our defenses, should we need to engage with the fleet in the future. Sir, on that note, shall we begin implementing the upgrade to our shields? Immediately, Lieutenant. Notify the engineers and relay the information to the crew. I hope your entry into the fleet has overcome any doubts you may have had regarding your mission. It certainly increased my estimates on success. Keep up the good work. We'll expect further reports. Dismissed. We don't have a full map of the fleet's roster. The members change too quickly. for any pirates you bring in. Welcome to the brig. As a member of SysDef, you may talk with the prisoners as long as you are mindful of operation security. As a personal rule, I simply ask that you adhere to UC Navy standards of cleanliness at all times. That means no mud on your boots, your hands are washed, and you are free of any contagious diseases. Excellent. And all that being said, I understand your mission directive might call for flexibility on my part. So if you need to be a rum-drinking, swashbuckling pirate to do your job, then I will do my best to clean up after you. No, the prisoner surrendered willingly, as per the terms of your deal. This is probably the safest place for him, if the fleet want him dead. You can chat with him, if you haven't already. I'm sure he has a lot to say. He's a good man, singularly focused when it comes to the fleet. But that's not to say he doesn't care about his crew. I can tell you a story as an example if you'd like to hear it.
So, I'm a bit of a workaholic, and I forget to take breaks. One day, Commander Ikande passes by the brig and sees me at my desk. He takes one look at my haggard face and says, Officer, I'm headed to the mess hall. If you're not with me in 15 minutes, your services will no longer be required on my ship. I tried to protest, but he was dead serious. So I went. We had lunch, talked about old times, and I went back to the brig refreshed and ready to work. It's little things like that. You can see he pays attention and that he cares about the people, not just the work. As a matter of fact, I have a favor to ask. I understand that part of your undercover work involves going to the fleet headquarters, namely the key. While you're there, if you find anything pertaining to the history of the fleet, I'd be interested in learning about it. It's not, and purely voluntary. As a jailer and a student of history, call it a professional curiosity. I appreciate it. I've actually heard rumors about there being audio logs for an interview the founder of the fleet, Jasper Crix, did on the key. I'm interested in anything he had to say regarding his time in prison and how the prisoners were treated. If you find anything like that, bring it back here and we'll take a listen. The fleet and the UC are intertwined and I've always felt knowing that past as an important part of what we do. In life, history can be a guide, a warning, or at times, a reflection. And if you want to know which one it is, you have to stare it in the face, regardless of how ugly it is. Are you going to finish that thought? You're dismissed. I guess you think I have some sad story to tell? That I met some sick orphans on New Homestead and grew a conscience? Or maybe you're the cynical type. And you think I turned a new leaf because I wanted Sis to have to go easy on me. The truth is a bit more complicated than that. Sure, I got time. You see, at my age, you know who you are. And I've always been a thief. I'd swipe a credit stick for my own mother if it had enough zeros on it. But even in a group of credit-hungry thieves, a man has to have a code. Rules. And they're as paper thin as Delgado's skin when you joke about his arm. Even Nev is a traitor to her own ambition, and Shinya to himself. But it means nothing if the higher-ups are loyal, if you can't keep the rooks from sampling your wares. That's the part that ticked me off. In the fleet, you gotta worry about the guy sleeping next to you, and if he's gonna take a bigger piece of the pie. You gotta wake up the next morning and wonder why your slice is missing and the crumbs are stuck to his face. <laughs> I put a bigger target on my back? As far as I'm concerned, the brig is the safest place I can be. 
The second you drag me into some private room, you're basically telling everyone here that I'm a rat. Well, for one, they don't have much in the way of loot, but they're still important to somebody. You can't just blow up one without it showing up on SSNN, or you see Captain getting a 10-inch stack of slates on his desk. But more importantly, do-gooders are predictable. The pirate code changes depending on who's reciting it. Honest folks, they have a habit of writing their rules down. Why did I join the Regana? Truth is, I just wanted a good night's sleep. Yeah, I've had some work done. If you got the Crimson Fleet on your back, you would too. As for the name, that was actually the hard part. You can use a hundred different aliases in the system, we'll just add them to the list. Now you can pay a guy to delete the list, but nothing's ever really gone forever. Nava probably paid the same guy to hit rewind, and here we are. you so long. Forget how to grab jump or something? Please. It'd be one less sloppy rook whose mess I had to clean up. The last thing I need is another Austin rate getting cold feet. You want to leave the fleet? You pay the price. Not in credits, but in blood. Fair enough. Glad to see you showing some backbone. Just be careful that you can back up that attitude before you square off with someone who can kick your ass. But all that aside, you made it. So now you get to hear a nifty history lesson. Pencils ready? Good. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Keep. Used to be an old you see Military Star Station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. Ah, 
<laughs> you think? And that's only part of it. I'll let Delgado fill you in on the whole story. He tells it better anyway. But I can give you the short version while we walk the station. It must be very embarrassing for the UC to be in this situation. Anyway, I'll tell you all about the key. But it's better if I show you too. Follow me. Hello, Captain. All right, history time. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies go to Supermax prison they call the lock. The UC is so clever. Supermax prison, lock, key, huh, cute, huh? the fleet needs right here of course you've got to pay for it remember on the key credits are key what the hell is this all right all right hang on nev before you get pissed i've got my hands full jasmine sweetie i'm trying to give a tour here so you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed it's called a malfunction you know that thing I spend most of my day dealing with, believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here is Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the lot. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, Neva. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Alutra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Roland, where you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just finding because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I'll remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. Head now. You want to survive? My story. My gear. The right gear. Grab the key, then I am here if you need me. That was how the Crimson Fleet began. Of course, Jasper Crix had a lot to do with all that, but uh, we'll get to him later. Rook, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. 
Neuroamps, blueprints. Hit her up and she'll take care of you. Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. I hope On the you right, with credits. You got Bradley from the Trade Authority. I'm sure you know the deal there. He'll buy pretty much anything, no matter how hot. Then we got our med bay on the left, run by the one and only Samina Mizra. She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you don't? Okay, this is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where bog serves watered down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here is the most important place on the entire station. The Reckoner's Corps, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new Rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit, given what happened with the last one. You mean Austin Ray? It's been taken care of, all right? I don't like loose ends, and this Rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. The money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. Glad you approve. Obviously, betrayal isn't taken lightly around here. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind and a certain degree of safety. It's why he's the boss. Of course, I'm not the first Reckoner to bear a bomb under my ribcage, but Delgado was smart enough to continue the tradition. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications even Bugen would envy, I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run-of-the-mill cyber runner. There. You're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. The perfect segue into my final subject. Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time using the computers that surround the core. If Neva's chosen wisely, we certainly will. Now, 
I believe that covers all I have to say. So you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level. You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. All right, listen up. You can all stop complaining. Atrium to cargo bay doors have been repaired. Oh, and you're welcome, Nev. or other new recruits. So, now that we are all here, it's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neighbors willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you, which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. You'd better not disappoint or you'll find yourself answering to me, personally. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. Boss. <laughs> Good. You're getting it already. I like that. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I'm impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead Rooks. You think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story? Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet, and if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits, and a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Griggs. Griggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. Through a bit of luck and a hell of a lot of cash, Neva was able to get her hands on an access code to the inside of the lock. This will be the first time someone from the Grinson fleet has set foot in there for, well, since Grix left the place behind. It has been frustrating being this close to potential clues, but not being able to find a way through those prison walls. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead. And I would wager we will find one on Subarov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crix left a lot of big talk on that recording, and not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crix's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UC Sistef.
You forget the UC is still licking its wounds from the colony wars. They don't have the capability to mount a full-scale assault. And if they were foolish enough to attack, we would have the manpower to push those pendejos right back to Jemison. If we have Grix's legacy. Listen to the words that I am saying. The legacy is real. You will find that out in due time, provided you're willing to put in the work. Nothing worth having ever comes easy. Strange words coming from a pirate. You steal what is not yours because it is easy, no? But perhaps I am mistaken. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay, enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting. Need something? <laughs> 